New Westminster Veterans Oral History Project. Today's date is December 10th, 2001. The interviewee is Miss Edith Urchuk, who is with the RCAF as a postal clerk. So, Miss Urchuk, what is your full name? Edith May Urchuk. And where were you born and when? Uh, Andale, Queens County, New Brunswick, uh, June the 14th, 1925. Okay. And what is your marital status? I'm a widow. You're a widow. And so what was your maiden name then? Wilson. Wilson. Okay. Do you have any children? I have four. You have four children. Yeah. And what are their names and ages? Uh, the oldest one is a boy, Jerry James Urcher. Mm -hmm. Second one is uh, a boy, Keith. I forget what his name is. Keith Urcher. Okay. Our third one is, is a girl, Susan Louise Urchuk, mm -hmm. and the last one is Cynthia Rose Urchuk, girl. Okay, good. Where were your parents from? Um, my father came from England. Mm -hmm. uh, excuse me. So my father, as far as I was concerned, I was told he was an um, orphan. Oh, okay. He came from England. Okay. And... Uh, he was brought over as a boy, and he worked on this farm with these people by the name of Richardson. They were English. They had no children. Oh, okay. So they, with a, uh, as far as I knew when I was small, they, they were my grandparents. You know? Right, right. Uh, on my mother's side, it was Scotch and Irish. Mm -hmm. And now I really never knew her actual mother. The one that I thought was my grandmother on that side was his second marriage. Oh, I see, I see. And uh, apparently he married three times, uh, the grandfather married hmm. three times. Hmm. And that name was Summers. Summers. That was Scottish. Right. Okay, so um, how did you get to be a New Westminster resident? I, I had been transferred back from Dartmouth, Nova Scotia, back to Sea Island in, in BC. And uh, Shortly after that, the war was over, mm -hmm. and they said we could get out. So I went scouting around to find work, because I like the mountains, I like to ski. Oh, yeah. And uh, the only mountains we had back in the Brunswick were, were the ones that they made, you know. Not real mountains. Not real mountains. <laughs> so I found a job at the first Eaton's mail order. It was on Granville Street in mm -hmm. Vancouver, mm -hmm. and the mail order there. That's before they had a store in, in, in Vancouver. Mm -hmm. They had no stores out here in the West Coast at all, Eaton's. Right. So we took mail orders. People come in. It was up. We had to take an elevator to go up. Was, I forget what the building was. But you had to go up upstairs <clears throat> in the elevator to where the mail order was. Mm -hmm. And we made out the orders, mm -hmm. took, took the money, and sent them back to Winnipeg. Okay. I guess someone phoned them to Winnipeg. Or, right, right. And so... And so when did you move into this house here in New Westminster? 1957. 1957. And what is your current address? 256 8th Avenue West, New West. Okay. And before 1957, were you living in Vancouver then? Yes. First we lived on, I think it was 1865 West 12th. <clears throat> and, uh, and then when I was expecting, I had to move from there. We moved to... Kingsway in Burnaby, okay. across what used to be the Gay Paris. We had a suite and a house. Okay. And uh, when my first son was born. And then we moved to Gilly Avenue, a little house in Burnaby. Right, right. And from there we moved here. Oh, okay. I see. The idea was here they had sewers and they had sidewalks. Here. Here. That was nice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so um, what branch of the armed forces were you enrolled in? Uh, the the RCAFWD. Okay. And what was your rank and position? LEW when I was when I was discharged. When you were discharged. Leading air, air woman. Right. And when you first went enrolled in, what AW2. was it? AW2. AW2. Yes. And what does that stand for? Air woman second class. Okay. And then your first class and then LEW. Oh, okay. I see. So when did you enroll in the armed forces? Mm -hmm. Uh, July 15, 1943. 
And and that was in New Brunswick then, or? Yes, uh, in St. John, New Brunswick. Oh, okay. I was so, living in St. John, New Brunswick when I, I joined the service. Oh, I see, I see. And how did your family feel about that? Well, there wasn't too much they could say about it. I mean, <laughs> I joined up, I wanted to go away, and uh, after all, we felt a little different than we do right now with this uh, war that they have so I suppose there's a war going on at the moment. Right. In, in what way was there a different feeling? Well, uh, Hitler was taking over all the, the countries over in Europe, and uh, I was afraid at one time when they started bombing London, that they might not stop there, might come to North America too. Right. So this was a real war then. Yes, right? it was a real war. Um, so when were you uh, discharged from duty? I believe it was in October 26, 1946. And that was where? At sea Island. Sea Island. Right. Oh, right. British Columbia. Okay. Um, and so you did three years of service then? And so when you heard that Canada declared war on Germany, uh, what sort of feelings or thoughts did you have? Well, I was in St. John, and I, I knew of quite a few uh, people that had signed up and went, went away. Mm -hmm. I mean, some of them, we had Merchant Marine in, in St. John. Right, right. On the, on the East Coast. We used to quite a few of the Merchant Marine. As a matter of fact, we used to... Uh, some of the the church halls and things they used to uh, have dances and things for the service men when they came in. Right, right, right. Well, I just thought if I, if I could do something to help, it's better. I, I'm not one the one to stay home and knit knit socks or anything like that. <laughs> right. I was young and then right. uh, full of energy and wa and wanted to do whatever I could. Right. So it was your choice then to be involved. Yes. Did you, when you volunteered then, did you volunteer on your own or with friends? On my own. On your own? Yes. And you just decided one day or? Yeah, I decided before I become, uh, my birthday being 14th of June, I, I uh, decided before that that I'd go down to the, where they were recruiting and put my name in. Mm. And what was the age for a woman? Was it 18? I think or? it was 18. Oh, okay. Okay. Um... So when you joined, you joined the RCAF, what type of training did you get? Well, we went to uh, Rockcliffe, Albert, mm -hmm. uh, Ontario, mm -hmm. so outside of Ottawa. We went through the regular manning, you know, getting up at 5.30 in the morning and doing your exercises, aerobics, and, mm -hmm. and uh, taking tests, and then you on different things, what you wanted to do. Mm -hmm. I didn't have the education to... Uh, uh, and I wasn't a nurse or anything like that. And uh, it, it seemed that I fitted in at the postal work more than I, I was knew the uh, my geography quite well. Mm -hmm. And uh, I took tests. Mm -hmm. That's what we decided that I was best fitted for. Right. And and so you weren't able to choose then. They just well, I, in a way, I was able to choose. I mean, I could have gone in the kitchen. I could have uh, maybe worked in the handed out parachutes or handed mm -hmm. out clothing or something, you know, in the area where they they fit everybody up for mm -hmm. their uniform. Mm -hmm. You could have done things like that, cooking. Mm -hmm. But, uh, oh, you were able to choose a certain amount. Yeah, and then they put you if they could sort of thing. Yes. So what sort of training did you receive for the postal, for postal work? Well, it was on the job. Oh, I on see. On the job. Okay. And so almost immediately then you began your your service. Yes, they sent me right from uh, from uh, Rockcliffe. I can't remember how many day, how many weeks we were in Rockcliffe out to Alberta. Oh, okay. And I'm not su sure which station I went to. I did three of them. Right. Uh, Vulcan, and Pierce, which and Clarison. Okay. Okay. Uh, Pierce, I remember the most uh, because of uh, they were all pilots when they came in there. Oh yeah. Was to the uh, was a flying instructor school. Mm -hmm. So they came in as a pilot and they trained to be night night flyers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And to go back to their their countries and retrain the people there because they were instructors oh, when they left. 
Oh, I see. And so you had uh, people from other countries. All right? over. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what was it like? What was the feeling like to be with these type of people? I got along very well. Yeah. Very well. Yeah. And the Australians, the New Zealanders, Norwegians. Yeah. Yeah. Some of the uh, uh, Swedish, even though they were uh, uh, supposed to have been uh, not directly in the war, but there was Swedish uh, trial. Really, eh? <coughs> It was supposed to be a neutral country during the war. Right, right, right. And it was Finland, Norway, Sweden, Denmark, all all those countries. Yeah, yeah. And so would you would you guys have like sort of a, a, a rapport with them? With Oh, uh, yes. There's a canteen at night. Uh, you meet them there. Uh, some of them gave me flights oh, yeah. out to the West Coast. So they yeah. would go ask, you know. If you, yeah, we had dances and everything. You mixed with them. Mm-hmm. So the hardest ones I found to understand were some of the Scotch and some of the different areas in English. I mean, oh, right, right, right. Oh, you know, their accent was, especially the Cockneys, they were hard to... Quite the twang to it. <laughs> so so they'd take you on flights and stuff like that? Once in a while, you know, they, they'd come in and they'd say, uh, I, I was called Willie. Oh, okay. For Wilson. Right. Uh, would you have a 48 this weekend? Why? <coughs> We're going to Calgary. You want a flight? You want to flip the car? Or, or are you going to Vancouver? Right. This is 48. They dropped me off. I said, we'll pick you up a certain time, a certain day, a certain hour. Yeah. On the way back. Yeah. Right on. And so would that be a good adventure? Well, or? it was. It was a good adventure. I mean, I would have wouldn't have seen the West Coast and the Probably on a 48 would be hard to, by train then, coming out here it takes quite a while. Oh, from Alberta, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I bet. So was it only in Alberta that you were stationed then? No. No, I was in British Columbia. Okay. And number 3RD, which was down under the Murad Bridge, mm-hmm. and Jericho Beach. Oh, okay. And and what sort of things did you do down there? Was there a, were there army personnel down there? or yeah, Air Force. Oh, okay. Air Force. Okay. Right. And Jericho Beach, of course, they watch the West Coast. Oh, I see, I see. Yeah. So, what sort of, like, you must have interacted on a regular basis with many of the men and women, right? Yes. Um, what What were the people like? What was the feeling of of, of the soldiers at the time? We all, we all get along uh, very well. Mm-hmm. You'd have sing songs mm-hmm. in the canteen, you'd have a few drinks and mm-hmm. sing songs. Were, were people generally eager to get into action, or...? In, in some respects, yes, yeah. they were. Yeah. Yes. Um, <clears throat> tell me about yeah, what your uniform and supplies would have been when you were at work. What your... Well, I could show you some of them. So um, we, had a, we had a skirt, which was an Air Force blue, mm-hmm. and uh, light-colored shirts. We wore a black tie with it. Mm-hmm. And uh, a tailored jacket with buttons you had to clean every day. Brass buttons. <laughs> Brass buttons, yes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, used to wear a lot of stockings and black laced sh- uh, shoes right. with a half decent heel. Oh, okay. So you look pretty good. And we had the peaked hats. <laughs> it wasn't oh, okay. until actually after the Second World War that they started wearing the wedgies like the men. Oh, I see. I see. Okay. And um, they had great coats, heavy wool great coats, went over the top of the uniform. Right, right. Just describe to me a regular or average day. Um, get up about five thirty. Maybe you shower, get washed, went out and out and did your your aerobics or whatever you want to call it, your exercises. Uh, went back to canteen or not canteen, back to the mess. Mm-hmm. Back to the mess and had all on the steam table, got ever what Whatever you wanted to eat, right. eat that. And you had a choice? Uh, not too much. It was <laughs> usually, um, quite often we used porridge, you know, oatmeal mm-hmm. porridge. Uh, pancakes and uh, there was eggs and bacon. Right. I never complained about food. I yeah. thought we would eat well. Yeah. Cheap coffee. That's one thing I didn't ever drink coffee in the Air Force. You never drank coffee? No. Oh. I drank milk. Juice and stuff like that. Right, right. Yeah, there's a story behind that. 
Oh. <laughs> right after we ta you tell me about your average day, tell me the story. Oh, and then we would go directly from the mess hall. Uh, oh, yeah, in between there somewhere we had to make up our bunks for oh, inspection. Okay. Right. And uh, then we went to our place of work. Mm -hmm. Post office was ours right to the guardhouse where you come in from outside. Oh, okay. We had the MPs. They're connected to the post office. Oh, I see. So... Then, then they had, uh, it depended on what station and, and where, what time the, the trains come in. Mm -hmm. There would always be one that the, uh, we had to schedule up who would go with the, with the driver to pick up the mail from the railway station. Right, right. Bring it back to us. We opened up the bags and started sorting. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you always had a, a sheet in front of you, taken on strength or struck off strength. Uh, ones that have been posted to the station, there would be new names come in and you put them in the slots. And uh, when they went off, when they were posted somewhere else, you put them aside and when you had the opportunity, or somebody else did it, put on where they were moved to. Oh, I see. Okay. So you guys did a lot of organization as well then. Yes. Right. We <laughs> also took in parcels, we weighed them, mm -hmm. and... Uh, uh, we paid, took the money, put in the till. Right. And we also did registered letters as well, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. insured. And re what they do in the, in the regular post office, I think more than they do now, because we stamp the letters. We had a stamper. Mm -hmm. We had to stamp them all by hand. That's another thing had to be changed every morning, the date, the month, and the year. Right. On the stamping machine thing, mm -hmm. hand stamp. To stamp the stamp. Yeah. There was two types of letters. We had a little blue one with an air mail that cost more to mail it. And the uh, post office carried those. So any airman that wanted to uh, write a letter and send it overseas to somebody's pals, or, or, or if it happened to be, they come from overseas. They went much, much faster because they went by air. Right, right. The others went over on boats. Oh, I see. Okay. And so then in the evening, like, would you be done at a certain time of the day, and then... Yes, I don't remember what the hours were now. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, once we're done there, you go back to the barracks, clean up maybe, and go go have dinner. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We, even in, in between, we had dinner, or had a, a lunch break in the, mm -hmm. around 12 or whatever. Right. So um, my next question is, tell me a bit about the mail service in the Air Force. What was it like? Was it good? Was I it thought it was good, yeah. yes. Yeah. Well, it took about a week to come from uh, back home. Like I come from St. John. My family was all back there. Mm -hmm. or it took took close to a week to come. Well, unless good. they did it by mail, by air mail. For any reason, by air mail. And did you ever notice, like, the response of people getting the mail or... You know, would people be excited to get the oh, mail? Oh, yes. Yes, they were. Especially yeah. the, the person from overseas. Right. Uh, if maybe see more of that down in uh, Claire's home where they, there was such a big uh, group of people from out of, outside Canada. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, they were very enthused. Maybe their wives, their sweethearts. Or, right. Or their parents, or right. sister and brother, or whatever. Hmm. Any experiences did you have uh, talking with people about their letters or back home or homesickness or anything like that? Oh, I, I think everybody had, if they had to stay on the base at uh, Christmas time, couldn't go home. Yeah, that would have been tough. Be. But then we, had, we also had uh, things arranged. Uh, and I guess the officers or the ones that were in, they'd have Christmas parties and mm. things like that in the canteen. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It's usually a good good area for dancing and music. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so what were the living conditions like? Like, what were your barracks like, things like that? Well, we had, I don't remember how many in a row. We used to have them all alone in a row of the beds. Mm -hmm. I always got tried to get a top bunk oh, so okay. nobody could mess mine up between the time. I guess we must have made it up before we went for dinner or breakfast. Right. So nobody could get on there and up, you know, tear it apart. And once it's made up up top, it stayed that way. Right. For inspection. Right, right. And uh, <coughs> we had a great big uh, place where you uh, 
your pride kind of went then. You didn't, you know, want in the privacy mm -hmm. because everybody went in and the showers and mm -hmm. the bathroom, you know, the sinks along the road and the toilets. And, mm -hmm. and, uh, not much privacy. Not too much privacy. <laughs> you kind of got over that, you know? Yeah, yeah, I bet. And yeah. did you guys create sort of a feeling of home in these places? Uh, I more or less, yeah, and, yeah, some. Yeah. What, what you were allowed. I uh, I had a pearl, a big pearl ring that my aunt from uh, uh, Brooklyn, New York, had given me. Three okay. big pearls. I had to send them home. They wouldn't allow it. No, couldn't wear them. Right, and I guess you wouldn't want to leave it by itself in there, right? Well, uh, you weren't allowed to keep it on the station anyway. So I sent it home, and uh, yeah, my sister said they never recall getting it. Really? Yeah. Really? Huh. Because one time or something she had been insured. Mm hmm. No kidding. Yeah. Um, so tell me about your coffee story. You said you had a coffee story. Oh, when we were down in, in Pierce, the closest uh, town was Fort McLeod. Okay. So we used to go in there. And we had a bus to shuttle back and forth from mm -hmm. Pierce. It was in south southwest of Fort McLeod. But, uh, we get in there and get drinking beer in the pub and sometimes we miss the miss the bus. We had to walk back to the airport. <laughs> so some of the girls would say, Willie, I'm gonna order your coffee. I'll be feeling pretty good. I said, you order the coffee, you drink it yourself. I never liked coffee. And their idea was they wanted to sober me up before I went through the guardhouse. See? Oh, I see. I said, Well I walk through I I work next door to those guys. They're not gonna do anything. Right. <laughs> so whether they would or whether they're not, but by the time you walked there, you weren't you weren't feeling. Uh, You're pretty sober, I bet. Yeah. <laughs> it was cold. You got those schnooks, and they 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 could be heat or they could be cold. Right. Right. Were you ever injured or anything like that? Yes. Uh, you were. Yes, down here I got a scar in here. Oh, okay. Um, this is at Jericho Beach. Right. Coming back on the mail run, I don't know, it was icy or what, but he missed the turn and went tripped over. And I woke up in the hospital and the, the, I just, just missed an artery there. Yeah, yeah. And they start telling me how lucky I was. And I said, what, to be in the hospital? <laughs> it wasn't the artery that was cut, it was just a, a vein. Were you in the hospital long then? Or? I don't call, recall, it might have been a week. Right. And and what was it like? What were the hospital people like? You Very know? good. Yeah. I had three trips in the hospital. I had my tonsils taken out once, and uh, this was in Alberta, uh, and I had my appendix taken out. Oh, really, eh? Well, I swear to this day it must have been the first job he ever did, because I've got a real big scar there. <laughs> you can see the marks right across where the stitches were. Oh, really, eh? Yeah. But these, but you really feel like uh, the hospitals, they treated you well? And oh, they did, yes. Yeah. Yes. Were Much the, more uh, uh, efficient than they are right now, yeah, as far as yeah, I'm concerned. Really? Yeah. Were, were they military or civilian? Yes. You know. oh. Although I, I was in the Calgary, in the, when I, the old one up on the hill. Okay. In, uh, it must have been, was that a Vulcan or Ferris so. Right. Right. Anyway. I just passed out on the parade square. That was the appendicitis? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Tell me about social life in the service. What was it like? Well, uh, I still have friends from, you know, the, mm -hmm. uh, Jerry Mercer down here, mm -hmm. Paul McDonald and Burnaby. Yeah. There's another lady uh, back in Moncton, that uh, girl, Lady was her name then, mm -hmm. real host now. And there's another one in St. John, Fran Turner. It's about four of them. I've lost track of a, quite a few. Yeah. You know, yeah. when I go to any of these um, luncheons or something, very seldom I see anybody that I recall before, you know. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Um, you mentioned at one point in the conversation that you went out for some beers with the other friends, with the other ladies. Is yeah. that is that one of the things you guys would do in the evening? Yes. Yeah. 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 Go to maybe a movie. Yeah. But we had movies on the station too. Okay. You know. Okay. Go to them. Yeah. As well. Yeah. And, and um, 
<clears throat> I like to see different places too. We went to Lethbridge and we went over to Wadden Lakes across. And part of the Wadden Lakes is on the Alberta side and there's some on the American. Oh, I see. And across the border. Right. And that, that would have been when you were on leave. Oh, uh, yes. Yeah. Yes, on leave. <clears throat> and how long would you go on leave for? Well, over 48 hours usually. Mm -hmm. you get, sometimes you've got 24, sometimes mm -hmm. 36. And uh, they kind of try to spread it around so there's always somebody to take your place. Right, right. And you, uh, anyway, they had enough, enough on strength that they kill them. Did, did you ever have long periods of leave? After the operations, I did. Yeah. I'd go back home and take me a week on the train. I'd just get there a few days and come back again. <laughs> Would it always be good going home, or was it more of a bother? Going home? Yeah. Oh, yes, I was ready to go home. Yeah. yeah. You missed it, eh? Yeah. Uh, for the longest while, I, every time a train would go, I wanted to go on it. Oh, really? Yeah. It was good. There were good uh, accommodations on the trains those days. Mm -hmm. You could get a berth. And it wasn't too expensive. Get your meals on the train. Mm -hmm. White tablecloths, you know, and all that. So yes. an enjoyable experience. Yes, yes it was. Huh. Huh. And um, did you guys, like, I mean, there wouldn't have been many women on the on the air bases. Did you guys... Oh, yes, there was oh, a lot of women oh, on the there? air base. Oh, yes. Because right. we did all the work, like, the, oh, for instance, uh, Millie... Uh, Stupid, your and Buck was her name when she was single. She was a driver. Right. And then there was uh, also uh, ones that worked in the in in the hangars, you mm -hmm. know, keeping track of different things in the hangars. Oh, I where, see. Where there the uh, coats, hats, all the stuff that the pilots needed was all mm -hmm. kept in order. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All those things. All done by women. Yeah, cooks. Did you guys ever have dances? Yes. Like that? Yes, yeah. we did. Yeah, and bands. And I, I, I showed you a picture of one of the ones there at one of the stations. Right, right, yeah. Um, <clears throat> tell me a bit about your commanding officers. What were they like? Um, they never bothered me too much. <laughs> Relationship-wise, did you guys have relationships with them? Not, not too much, no. No, no. no. Um, do you have any sort of one main memory or experience that stands out for you the most of your time in active service? Or a couple? <laughs> <laughs> no, I accept the, the ones that down in the... Oh, yeah, we used to go swimming in the Old Man River down at Pierce. Oh, okay. And it was just almost like a mud hole when it dried up in the summer. Mm -hmm. But it was water. Right, right. And you could, you know, they dammed it up and... Now I understand they've dammed it up, and uh, some of the areas are going really barren. Oh, I bet. I bet. Because it was just a small river, and it was running south, mm -hmm. southwest. And I don't know whether it was connected to the Bow or, or which river, other rivers, mm -hmm. or whether it would just run off, may have started and run off. Right. Did, did you meet your husband when you were in the Army? Or the, the, sorry, the Air Force? Yes, in Dartmouth, Nova Scotia. Okay, so you're actually stationed out there too, is that mm -hmm. right? Okay, tell me about that. How you met your husband? I believe it was in the canteen, mm -hmm. in on the air base. We were all, or we were supposed to be going overseas then. Oh, so this is right near the end of the war then. Yeah. Okay. Uh, well, I, I, I corresponded with quite a few guys. Some of them were overseas. And I never thought I'd ever see him again either, you know. Right, right. But uh, when I was posted back here to Sea Island, he said, well, I'll see you out there. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, sure. <laughs> but, uh, then when I was working at Eaton's here after I got out, uh, he, he wrote to me and he told me he and Harry, this was a fellow from his hometown, were going to hitchhike down through the states or into Florida and come back up the West Coast, oh, okay. which they did. Oh, okay. There's a little story there, too. What's that? When they're going over from, uh, was it Miami? Crossing the border, anyway, into Florida somewhere. Mm-hmm. He said, uh, they were taking all the fruit in the... Sit down and, and eat all the fruit. He said, we were two stuffed guys. Eat all the fruit. 
before they went across the border. He said they were going to feed the pigs on their fruit. <laughs> <laughs> they just wouldn't let them. Bring. Oh, I see. Yeah. Right, right, right. So anyway, he came up and, and he knew where I was working. Oh, he showed up up at Eaton's where I was working at. Surprised? Yeah, I was. <laughs> so he told me he and Harry they were going home. And he was coming back out and he'd signed up for a uh, welding course. Welding course. And he said, first I'm going to work in the lumber woods. He went over to Ubo just to make some money for the pay for his room and board and while he was the Air Force was going to pay for the course, but or the what we call gratuities they give you for so many so much money for every every year you've been in the service. Right. right. So he went to U Bow and then we corresponded back and forth and come over a weekend now and then. Mm-hmm. And uh, uh Back took his welding course, and uh, when that was finished, he decided we'd get married. Hmm. And he had two two sisters come out. out. Uh, one one was a nurse, and the other one, she was as an office worker. I said, "Look me over, I guess, before we got married." <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we were married out here. We didn't go back east to get married. Oh, you didn't, eh? No. Did your family come here? Or? No. No, no uh, just the two sisters that came before. Right, right. And uh, uh, the, the, his landlady had a reception for us. Oh, okay. Up on uh, 35th and Dunbar. Yeah, yeah. We were married in the United Memorial Church up there. Reverend Switzer. Okay. He's deceased now, but... Uh, I met him years after here in New West at one of our Sunday school picnics. Yeah, yeah. And uh, when I told him who I was, he said, gee, I bet you a lot of water went under the bridge since then. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Tell me about your feelings on on VE Day. Well, I was glad to see it was over with and that the boys had come back. Yeah. Because when I was down in Halifax, I saw a lot of them that come back that had been uh, lost in arms, legs, eyes, and mm-hmm. some of them coming in, so on stretchers, and some of them were walking with cane, you know, crutches. And mm-hmm. So, although well, there's some up here now, is still in the in the hospital, never never did get out. No kidding, hey. No. Did. Did those sort of th- scenes make you? They bothered me. Yeah. Yes, they bothered me very badly. Yeah. As a matter of fact, in uh, 1988, we took a trip to Europe, and uh, we went across from England to uh, Calais, mm-hmm. down through France, Switzerland, up through Germany. When I went over the border, I got pins and needles through. Really, yeah. Just to see that uniform and when they stamped my passport. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I bet, I bet. Uh, did I, you? I'm okay. one of the older ones that uh, wouldn't forget. There's not too many of us left, mm-hmm. but uh, I, I uh, was in Cuba here in um, 96, season and I, and it was quite close for the Germans to go there for holidays. Mm-hmm. I, I just couldn't uh, associate with them. Still, still really vivid for you, right? Yeah. 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 It's Japanese the same way. Really, eh? Yeah. What, uh, what sort of celebrations did you attend when you found out the war was over? Well, I guess maybe we must have had a party of some kind. I don't know. Can't remember now, but I mean, I got out shortly after that. So. Mm-hmm. When you got out, did you go straight home, or did you stay? I never your... went back. Oh, you didn't. And then, eh? uh, Right after I get out. No, he said, well, I'm going to make you a ticket out for I said, don't bother. I'm staying here. Really? So hey? I saved them some money. <laughs> and, and you just decided because you loved it here? Or? I liked it here, yes. Mm-hmm. I liked the West Coast. I liked the mountains for skiing. Mm-hmm. And we used to go out to, uh, when we, we were down at 3RD or, or Jericho, uh, well, the furthest one over there, they renamed it. Uh, Spanish banks or something? Or? No, no, the mountain. Uh, and Seymour was gross and it was Cypress, uh, Cypress Bowl yeah. now they call it. Yeah. We used to go over there and oh, nice. that was the closest one for us. Right, right. Over the, well, the, um, 
that, that bridge in Stanley Park there, mm -hmm. it was open then. Mm -hmm. You used to pay a toll on it, 25 cents. No kidding. You had to go across, 25 mm -hmm. cents. Paid for the bridge. You're talking about putting tolls on again, I hear. Yeah. So, um, what sort of attitudes did people have towards you people who were in the service after the I war? I found a very good, uh, uh, Alberta especially, I mean, we mm -hmm. hitchhiked all over the place. Mm -hmm. You'd go in twos, you know, and uh, you'd get a ride. Mm -hmm. Hitchhiked from, Al from southern Alberta up to Edmonton, spend the weekend, hitchhiked back again. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I saw a lot of the country that way. You did, eh? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Good way to see it, I suppose. But I don't think it's very safe these days. <laughs> no. What you hear. No. You mentioned that when you were discharged, you got a gratuity. Yeah. And what 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 did that entail? And what other things were provided for you when you were discharged? That was about it. Right. Right. Uh, I bought furniture with mine. Oh, okay. Chesterfield and chairs and fridge <laughs> and. And there was a, a storm that came, Wasp, was down here in New West, mm -hmm. and right at the corner where they had, uh, where, the, where they go up to go up to uh, the key now. Oh, okay. The corner, right in the corner one time. It was a, uh, oh, I don't know, a secondhand place or whatever it is, recently been there. Okay. It was a furniture or appliance place? It was appliance, it was furniture, and it, it had good furniture. Yeah. I used my gratuity to... Now, Mrs. Mercer, uh, she and Ray, they they bought uh, the land and had that house built oh, okay. through the DVA. Right, right. Hello? Mercer. Um, so you mentioned you went to Eaton's after the war. That's where I went to work, yes. Mm -hmm. And what was it like getting back into civilian life? Oh, I didn't seem to have any problem. Mm -hmm. I mean, I was doing almost the same kind of work, only different, you know. Mm -hmm. Like we made out a mail order, made out a, a sheet, and the people would mm -hmm. tell you what they want. You take it over the phone, and some, sometimes they phone in, you get their address, and such, and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. But now you lived on your own. <laughs> yes, yes, I did. Yeah, yeah. Um, do you belong to any sort of veterans organizations? I did belong to the Legion for a while, yeah. and I dropped that because uh, I was working down at here at the Army Navy, right. and oh, I was out for an uh, operation, and during the time I was out for the operation, my uh, dues had come due. So I was back on, a I went on afternoons, I thought, well, I'll walk down to the Legion and I'll pay pay my, my dues, and we the office was closed, so I went down, to the, they used to take it at the bar, mm -hmm. and they had a young fellow on there who was feeling his weight, and he told me that uh, I was overdue, and my, you know, this was going to cost me more, and et cetera, et cetera, and I said, but you can keep it, I don't need it, you know, I don't need to have that, and uh, top it all off, the women's auxiliary, most of them are just either they had husbands or or fathers or something was in it before. None of them are re as veterans. Right. Very few of them. Right. And they said if I wanted to come to their meetings, I had to pay extra too. So I don't need that either. You know. Right. Oh yeah. So yeah. Uh, I dropped it. I yeah. still have my Legion uniform around here. Right. Do you belong to anything, any RCAF organization? Or? I went a few times up in Vancouver. Right. And uh, Paul McDonald and I did. We went to one of their dues. But I found it was too too far away. It was up on the 41st and 49th or something up there in Granville. Oh, yeah, that's a trek. And, yeah, so there wasn't anything around here. Right, right. I think I would have rather joined that than the Legion. Yeah. What does it mean to you to be a veteran? I'm quite proud to have been a veteran. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Why yeah. is that? Well, I figured we did something, and uh, I've got a book here. It said we something we uh, served so that men may fly. Right. Uh, 
Although this is kind of, whoever wrote that is kind of a comic car, you know. You know, I've heard a few uh, uh, comments that I didn't like. Uh, a, friend, a woman used to live across the street here was going with a fella. He had been a fireman. And he was an ex-MP. And he was always making comments about the girls in the service were easy. Oh, yeah. So she kept saying to me, why, why don't you come and see me? Why don't you come and see me? So one day I finally told her, I said, oh, I, I just can't take that stuff, you know? Yeah. I said, he's leading you on and saying he, he had been so used to uh, working nights that he, he couldn't, uh, he couldn't get up early in the morning and, and do uh, an ordinary day's work or ordinary life like anyone else. Mm -hmm. She always had to get her son to drive her somewhere because Mike was still sleeping. Mm -hmm. So uh, I, I've, I've heard different uh, different comments like that. Mm -hmm. but, uh, oh, that's too bad. <laughs> well, I don't care. I mean, he's gone now, and uh, she, it would just... I, I didn't have to listen to that. So right. My husband never talked that way about uh, right. in the service. And right. And he was in the service as yes. well. Yeah. How do you and your family observe Remembrance Day? Well, this last, uh, this last time I didn't go out. I mm -hmm. usually go down to the cenotaph down here and forget to uh, see how. Yeah. Go to the armory for the service. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. Last year it was so muddy, they had just started to uh, put in that walkway around around the uh, sun of town. Oh, Most of right. it was to stand out in the mud, so right. I just didn't bother. <laughs> right. It was a bad day to start with. Yeah. On the 11th. So. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Sometimes yeah. it's pretty rainy on the 11th. Do you still maintain, well, and you mentioned you have, like contacts and friendships with people that you're in the service with? Yes, I do. Mm -hmm. And and why is that? Like, I I don't know. It just some. Um, I I felt that we uh, we worked hard, we get up early hours, mm -hmm. and everything, but uh, we seem to enjoy each other's company. Right. May, maybe those days. Now it's a gay thing. You know, two women and you see them going out together any length of time, or two men or something. It's gay. Everything's right. gay. But we never thought of anything of going to, up to Edmonton. Or Millie Stupid and I, we used to hitchhike up there and get a room and spend the weekend. Yeah. You know. Yeah. But now, if they see two women go off like that, oh, they're gay. They got gay. Right, but you guys just just strong friendships. Just strong friendships. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Well, thank you, Mrs. Urchuk. I think that's it for the interview. Good. Um, is there anything you feel I've missed, or that you'd no, like to add? No, I don't think so. Okay. No. Well, thank you very thank much. You.